Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. We've got the Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, with us uh, here in the uh, studio and with us in the Plaza Hotel. Kristalina, great to see welcome. you. Welcome, welcome. Great to be with you. We're here focused very much on climate solutions, on the challenges that the climate crisis has presented us as well. But I want to ask you about the situation facing the global economy. We've had the Fed has cut interest rates. It's joined the easing party that global central banks have been been taking in the past couple of months. We're about a month away from the update of the next IMF global economic forecast. What's your reading now on where we are in the global economy, how much those central bank rate cuts are going to help? Well, the global economy has been remarkably resilient uh, despite the horrendous shocks of the last years, despite of interest rates fighting inflation for the last uh, more than a year, we have seen global growth holding. Uh, We project 3.2% this year, 3.2% next year. The two engines of this performance U.S. economy and uh, most of emerging Asia, especially India, ASEAN. We are now seeing interest rates in most economies going uh, down, and rightly so, because we also see the price being paid for interest rates being high. It is uh, affecting somewhat prospects for growth in major uh, economies. Two very important points for your uh, audience. Number one, yes, growth is holding, but by historic standards, it is not high enough to retain good prospects for our economies. Before the pandemic, average growth, 3.8%. Two, we also have very high debt levels. And that combination of slow growth and high debt uh, is something that uh, we at the fund uh, worry about. What we want to see is countries taking seriously the importance of fiscal prudence. So the uh, central banks have done their job. They fought inflation. Inflation is going down. Rates are going down. We need the uh, fiscal side to be equally uh, committed. And of course, we want to see more attention as to what drives growth up. I want to go back to inflation, though. With the Fed finally making that big move last week, that half a point cut, inflation defeated, mission accomplished, done? Or would you say not necessarily yet? Uh, Watch it. Um, uh, Yes, we are in a very good place. We have been predicting soft landing Uh, we would see inflation down and growth still remaining firmly in positive territory. This is where we are. Uh, We know that in the services, uh, inflation is still flaring a little bit more, so the Fed is going to watch it. Uh, But uh, broadly, we think that uh, uh, the Fed got it right and uh, uh, we would see uh, how that evolves in the next uh, uh, meeting of the Fed not to exclude there could be uh, more uh, cuts. But again, why is the Fed successful? Because it is data-driven. So they would watch incoming data uh, very carefully. I I take note that you're worried about the fiscal side, though. How big a risk is what you're hearing in the U.S. election campaign? That's going to have a huge impact on U.S. fiscal policy. Look, I mean, let's first give credit where credit is due. The U.S. has help the world economy to stay afloat in this very difficult time. So when we think about the response to the pandemic, the response to the um, uh, war in Ukraine, the spike of energy and food prices, having the U.S. economy to perk in the way it did, a very good news for everybody. Uh, This being said, we have to all think of the Peace that may be around the corner. What we learned in these last years is that we are in a more shock-prone world Mm. and having fiscal space to act should that become necessary is a message we send to all our members. Is that our number one risk, though, the fiscal 
position of the United States and other? Well, I mean, the United States uh, has the uh, uh, ability to fund itself uh, in a fairly comfortable uh, manner. Right. Uh, what we see in some other countries, uh, they don't quite have that uh, privilege. So the um, pressure for imminent action, of course, differs in mm -hmm. different uh, places. We do, we have been saying that, make sure that you are not pushing prices up by uh, uh, getting more money into the economy, Too much stimulus. Than the economy than the economy can handle. So be careful. But you don't worry about the, like with the U.S. federal bank in particular, that by that half a point cut, that there maybe are putting a little bit more stimulus when the economy seems to be doing well, right? There's growth. It, yeah, the economy is doing well. The labor market's still some okay. Some of the signs you actually are reporting in your program that consumers seem to be saying, well, you're not mm -hmm. as confident as we were before. Uh, let's remember that when you have interest rates so high, that has impact. And it is the desired impact to bring inflation down and the accompanying not so desired impact on consumer and business uh, confidence. So my, my message is the following. We have to all be very watchful of whether there is risk of inflation to flare up again. What is happening around the world? Mm -hmm. You know, we just saw in uh, the, the Middle East yeah. spike of a war with the accompanying not big but still visible impact on oil prices right so we are not i mean as uh, the movie would go we are not in kansas anymore <laughs> we're in a different world more more shock prone more unpredictable keep your powder dry don't use all of it uh, at once one of the shocks that did upend the global economy as Russia's war in Ukraine. And the fund was criticised recently uh, for planning to restart annual economic consultations with Russia. Whose idea was that? Look, I mean, we do have an articles of agreement and they say you have to have regular consultations. The Russian case is a very complex case. This is not your normal Article 4. Uh, so, as you know, we have... Uh, said <laughs> we need to see whether we have all the data, we need to see whether we are ready, and uh, uh, at this moment, we are not. But does that damage the rep fund's reputation, having, having that sort of confusion around starting and then stopping? I think that the fund has been uh, incredibly strong over this period of time of shock upon shock upon shock. We have supplied liquidity to countries that need it, we boosted reserves for countries so they can go through these shocks. And I think our reputation speaks for itself by the fact that our membership is increasing. We just got our 191st member, the tiny country of Liechtenstein, uh, joining us. Why? Because we are an anchor in a sea of trouble. So uh, I would uh, argue that uh, when you look at the fund, you have a credible institution. We have come through. We help the world economy to steer through very difficult time. We will continue to do that. But is it tricky considering the war and, and in, in terms of is. advising Russia, like how to survive through of this course. when most of the developed world, as you know, of course it is think tricky. it is a horrible Look, war? I, my heart bleeds for the people in Ukraine that have been so harshly hit by Russia's war. I want to see the war ending for the sake of Ukraine and for the sake of the global economy. It was incredibly damaging mm -hmm. to the whole world. Mm -hmm. uh, when we think of this, is it, is it possible to do Article 4 without enhancing uh, Russia's capabilities? We have to sit back and think twice. And this is what we're doing right now. How long, how long will you wait before that issue? And, and, and why are some of our members, I mean, this is our dilemma. Some of our members are saying, please, are you you're, the only, you're the only institution, not Russia, other members. They're saying, you're the only institution that can come up with some credible assessment. What is happening in Russia? Uh, so that is also something that is uh, in the equation. But I'm telling you, 
this is not an adventure we would take ever lightly. And uh, I care very deeply for the trust of my membership. We need to be there as an institution that holds strong in a world that has more trouble. I want to ask you about Argentina, because you guys have put in, um, there were some complaints by the Argentinian president about the IMF negotiator. Um, yeah. You put in a new negotiator. And we do wonder about, like, what does that signal to other countries when they're maybe not happy with negotiations or policies or the IMF? So the, the, the answer is very simple. It is the uh, negotiator himself who found the situation being complicated. Yeah. How do you negotiate with somebody who does not trust you at all? So it was that negotiator that looked into the situation in Argentina. Does Argentina need uh, help from the fund? Yes. Do they need our advice? Yes. Well, let me send somebody who the president would listen to. Uh, and I can tell you that that was the, a mature judgment and I stand by this judgment of my uh, staffer. Great professional, great professional, Rodrigo Valdez. I admire him for the maturity he has shown in that environment. And are, are you hopeful for improved relationships <laughs> with Argentina as a result of that change? Will, will things proceed more smoothly with the IMF's relationship there? Argentina, Argentina faces uh, very, very tough yeah. uh, problems to solve. And uh, I know that Argentina would only benefit of having the IMF analytically to stand by Argentina and uh, financially to stand by Argentina. Madam Director, I don't know if you realize it, but there's an election going on in the United States. And I am, <laughs> I am curious, you've got two candidates with radically different yeah. positions on a lot of different issues, whether it's trade, immigration, the U.S.'s position on the global stage, on economic policy, what's your advice for the next president of the United States? Look, I mean, the, the elections in the United States, uh, this is the choice of the American people. They make this choice, they have a president, and then this president sets up an agenda for the country. Uh, we are always there for our members to give them our best shot advice. Uh, so are your members worried about the outcome of the U.S. election? The uh, whole of the membership is now faced in a world in which 60% um, of people are going to the polls. Yeah. You ask different countries, they have dif different worries. Uh, but there are also very amazing stories that I hope you would tell. I was uh, with uh, Professor Yunus of Bangladesh. Here is a country in which the youth of the country said, no more corruption, we want to turn a page. And uh, for us, supporting this country to turn that page, to get a, a good growth and good prospects for their people, amazing. So listening to the younger population, always yes. important. Christalina yes. Georgieva, thank you so much. We so thank appreciate you. your time here. Managing Director, of course, of the International Monetary Fund. Thank you so much. My pleasure.